And that's why everybody wants a piece of the action Everybody needs a main attraction I got what everybody needs Satisfaction guarantees That everybody wants a piece of the action Best show, you're on the air. Tom. Hi. Hi, it's Richard Callender. Richard Callender, how are you? I'm very good. How about yourself? I'm doing okay. Now, th- this guy, I feel bad. Last week, this dude designed this costume, this Dr. Cronut costume that Mike wore, which is an amazing costume. Thank you. And then I was like, come on, you can come on the air. And he, I forgot to bring him in because last week's show was so packed with, with people. He, this, you, you sat out in the, in the, in the vestibule. For for two and a half hours, it was still a lot of fun, you know, to to be there and see how uh, the sausage gets made. Okay, well, look, I'm glad you had an okay time, but I felt bad about it. Well, I you know I appreciate it. I appreciate you telling me you told me asked me to call, so I, uh, you know, no problem. So give a uh, well, uh, you make costumes? Is that what you do for a living? Yeah, you make costumes. Mm-hmm. Like what kind of costumes do you make, Richard? Uh, I make a lot of reproductions. Um, like a lot of people say, I want to, hey, I want to be a, a character from Star Wars, or I want to be uh, Captain America, or mm-hmm. um, I've even made uh, you know stuff for little kids. I made a Glenda the Good Witch costume for mm-hmm. uh, a friend of mine. His uh, daughter was in a school play. Mm-hmm. Uh, mutual you ever friend do of ours, Alf? Matt. You ever do Alf for anybody? I, I haven't made Alf for anybody, but I, I'd, I'd love the chance. How much would you charge if someone, if an adult, wanted a head-to-toe ALF costume? Uh, before or after the psych evaluation. You can, look, if you're going to make costumes for people, you can, <laughs> hardly, you can hardly ask them to pass some sort of psychiatric test. Fair enough. You'll, uh, you won't make another costume for as long as you live. Uh, I try to work within people's budgets, you know, mm-hmm. like... Uh, if somebody doesn't have a lot of money, I say, well, okay, I can try to make it. You make, like, Alf's hand for yeah, them. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. Like, maybe you go get a picture of Alf, and I can make the hand, and then you can kind of recreate it that yeah, way. Yeah, I'll put it on a paper bag. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know. What's the craziest costume you've ever made, Richard? Uh, uh I mean, Dr. Cronut would probably be pretty up there. Uh, it was, you know, it was, I, I don't get a chance to do a lot of, like, original mm-hmm. Uh, creation. So sure. I was listening to the show a few months ago, and you you talked about it with Tom, and I you know I got in contact with you through a mutual friend of ours, and I said, hey, I can make this, and you guys said, hey, shoot us over a design. I had a friend Kiko draw the design up, and uh, you guys loved it. So to do something that was literally was totally original was was a lot of fun. It wasn't maybe the most ambitious one that I've done. But certainly, uh, it was a lot of fun to do something where I had a lot of creative control like that. Yeah, no, it's a great. You did a great job on it. Thank you for that. It was no problem. It what, was. Um, it was a lot of fun. You what, know, I got to do that ray gun, which was a blast. And um, yeah, it was a. You know, it was a, It wasn't. It was really a lot of fun to make. What's the most troubling costume you've ever made? Uh, I had to make. It was a helmet. Um, from a sort of obscure character from Star Wars. Mm -hmm. And uh, it had a lot of detail, and there were electronic parts in it, and there was some fabric work on it, and it had this person uh, was a cosplayer, and she takes it, you know, she travels, she goes to conventions, so she needs it to not get destroyed. And then there's the added thing where she's clearly a, a massive fan, mm-hmm. and if it doesn't look right, she's going to know, and she's going to be embarrassed to wear it. Yeah. Uh, because cosplayers are really passionate about what they do, mm-hmm. and I'd be lying if I said I wasn't the same way. But you know, when it's when you're somebody's paying a lot of money, mm-hmm. and in this case they were, when somebody's paying a lot of money, and they want it to look right, and they want it to be something they're proud of, and maybe try to win some contests or even bragging rights, that was kind of stressful. It was, a, it, was a, it was a character called Bosch from Return of the Jedi. Bosch? Yes. It's, um, it's, a, it's, it's a disguise that Princess Leia wears. Yeah. When she wears that thing, she's like, no, 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 yeah. whatever, right? Yeah, and that's the other problem is it was so much work, 
and I knew for her it was really important, mm -hmm. but like uh, you tell the average person, they have no idea what that character is. They don't even say the character's name. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's one of those things where it's a lot of work for like to make this one thing really, really special for like one specific person. Yeah. But um, I got to say that it's probably one of the the coolest things. Like when I had when I finally finished it, I was almost reluctant to give it up because it yeah. turned out great. Now, Richard. Yes, sir. Richard Callender. Yes. Tell me and tell the listeners where anyone can track you down if they want the doctor. Not no more Doctor Krona costumes. Break the mold on that. Uh, the last thing Mike needs <laughs> is some guy running around in a Doctor Krona costume committing crimes. Fair enough. No, you're right. Because then it just the cops will go right. They'll just be like, "Oh, that's Mike, Doctor Krona." Right? Yeah. Right, Mike. Ugh. Even when Mike pretends to roll with it. That might be my least favorite part of all this. <laughs> Mike going, yeah. No. Did you like the, the costume's cool, right, Mike? Yeah. Yeah. I want to bring the gun in. I, I forgot to bring it in tonight. The gun is amazing. You made this gun, and it makes, it makes all these sounds, and it's got knobs on it. You can change the pitch. It's crazy. And Mike looked really awesome last week in the costume. I, You know, it was funny. I had a... a, a when I saw, and I, I need to put it, I need to post it, the concept sketch next to Mike actually wearing it, it's crazy how, like, perfect it looks. It looks exactly like the design. Mm -hmm. Right down to his expression. Yeah. No, you got, you nailed it with him. <laughs> Where can people find you, Richard? Um, my, my company is called Cowardly Lot Costumes, and uh, we're on Facebook. Cowardly uh, Lot? Cowardly Lot. Cowardly Lot. It's a ba old Batman reference. Uh, Cowardly Lot costumes mm -hmm. were on uh, Facebook. Uh, I've got a lot of pictures from last week posted on Instagram. I even took a couple vines mm -hmm. on Instagram of uh, Dr. Cronut and Captain Bayonne. But uh, Cowardly, it's Facebook.com slash Cowardly Lot costumes. Awesome. Well, look, Richard, thank you so much for, for designing that, and it was a, it was awesome. And uh, I appreciate the work you put into it. It, it. Like I said, it was a pleasure, and it was really great to just sort of contribute to, like, the weirdening of the show. Yes. It's getting weirder. Yep. Thanks, buddy. You're very welcome. Have Bye. a great night. Thank you. Bye. Who do you want to be today? Who do you want to be? Who do you want to be today? Do you want to be just like me?